Welcome everybody to Quiz Prison, aka the escape artist Danba. Dan B. Get yourselves in the lobby, Dan B. Welcome to your lobby to have you here. Welcome back. It is time for Quiz Prison, aka the escape artist. <laughs> this game is scary. I'll explain the rules as we go though. It was all neon lights. It's, it's been so long since we played the escape artist. Dave has mentioned it the other day when we had the survey for last week, and he's so right. It's been such a long time since we played the escape artist. I've still got another two packs and unused. The escape artist is going to be coming back for the series uh, season series finale season finale, uh, which is looking to be the end of this month. Going to coincide with the lottery draw of pennies for this season, and of course the face-off final, uh, which is going to be hugely exciting. Do pop yourself into the lobby if you'd like to play. The Escape Artist is an elimination sort of battle royale style game. It's one of those ones, once you're out, you're out. So, uh, no no lobby game in this. Once you're out in this game, you're locked in forever. Quiz Prison is where you have to stay for all of time. So, um, can you survive? At the moment, 37 players have decided to take on the challenge. If we get three more, then we'll go to a wide view. That'd be nice. Uh, welcome to some new players who have joined us as well. Goodness me, a lot of new names that I haven't seen. Um, where did I get to last time? Prey Streams, Ash, Topper, Hello, Shadowmane, Hodders, Toot, Serial Quizzer, Time Strike, Drew Day Tom, Jers 101, 8 Minky, The Lupine One, Buzz Dead, Theory Games, Cetra, Maxio, and Mokra. Welcome, hello, 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 hello. How lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us on this chilly Tuesday evening. We get one more, we go to widescreen view. So if we get two more, we go to widescreen view. If we get one more, then we go to. Full view, full podium view. Uh, anyone else want to come and join? Because I'm going to get this game going again. There should now be plenty into it. I haven't tested it, but I trust my own programming uh, because it's basically just a copy and paste job um, now into each individual project as and when I need it. The Purge now, I think the only outstanding one that doesn't have penny integration. Um, and as soon as I get them all integrated, I will go and change it so that it automates the system rather than me having to manually do it. So. That'll be a fun exercise, it just starts again. Oh yeah, if you want to talk, exclamation mark, followed by your message in public chat. But the rest of this game is done to Persephone's Twitch bot, whispers only. Yes, boobs, Kira, boobs indeed. How, how mature, how mature. <laughs> uh, of course, Oni's in the front and centre, Oni, you've got to be. Got to be centre after hiding away in the last game. You now get no, top and centre rather than front and centre. <laughs> Welcome to your... We have got a, uh, a full three rows, so I'm tempted to lock it there. I'll give you another 30 seconds to come join if you want to give us the wide view. Uh, but otherwise, we'll get this game underway, and I'll explain the rules of round number one. 25 seconds. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Hello, SM MIDI, giving us a widescreen view. And five, four, three, two, one. Let's wait for this pan to finish, and then you're going to get locked in. Get out while you can. Okay, let's lock you in. I bless the rains down in Attica. Hopefully that's bigger. It will be better when it's in the middle in the centre lozenge, but that will require slightly more re-engineering than I had time to do this afternoon, given what I was doing today, which will be explained in due course, I'm sure. Are you off for what, my darling? It's... Is it still snowing? April, and I'm dressed like... I'm my wife is dressed like a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> it's Scott of the Antarctic here. He's about to go take the dog for a walk. <laughs> Anyway, have a lovely time. I shall. Love you. Bye, guys. Enjoy the escape artist. See you in a bit. Love you. Mez. I've never been called Mez before. Mez. Mez. Hi, hi, Mez. Mez. That's what we say to it. Oh, it's just, it's just meh. Mez. Go, go, shoo, shoo, shoo. The dog, don't hit at me. The dog, dog saying, I need a piss, mummy. Please take me outside. I need to piss on a piece of grass. Right. Here we go. The escape artist. Round one is initiate. For those of you who haven't played before or haven't played for a while and want a reminder, here's how it works. To escape this round, you need to answer 
five questions. Now, I'm not telling my wife to shoo in, not, not in a serious way, brand new Halo, not in a, in a, you know, in a fun, bantery way. Uh, in order to escape this round, you need to answer five out of ten questions. At the same time, you need to accrue as many points as you possibly can, because those points will be valuable later on. Five correct answer. You need to answer five correct. If you get it wrong, it doesn't count as a correct answer. So, once you've answered five, you cannot answer any more. Sort of like Google that, um, the bidding war round. I can't remember what that round is called. Round four of Google that. Once you've answered five, you can't answer any more. So think about which ones you want to answer. Up in the top left hand corner, you will see the question values. The question values directly correlate to their difficulty. So the one point question will be the easiest of the lot. The 10 point question will be harder. You've got to decide which five you're going to answer. And uh, that is not a nice opening. It's not. 87961. That's a really tough opening. Um, so you've got to decide which you're going to answer, because if you get one wrong, you lose a life. Those little sparkly, um, twing, twing, twinkling green things in front of you. And if you run out of all three lives, you are eliminated from the game. If you fail to answer five questions before the end of the round, you are eliminated from the game. If you put yourself in a position whereby it is no longer possible for you to answer five questions, i.e. there are four questions left and you still need five, you will be eliminated from the game. Once you've answered five, you can no longer answer questions, but you will be safely through to round two. You must answer a full answer. I can override if I see the need, if the spell checker hasn't caught it for whatever reason. But question number one, for example, is going to be worth eight points. This is one of the more difficult questions of the round. You don't have to play. You can abstain because if you get it wrong, you lose a life. But remember, you've got to answer five before the end of the ten. The very best of luck to all 40 players in this game of The Escape Artist tonight, written by David J. Bodycomb, the questions for this game. Question number one is worth eight points. Here it is. Former Bond girl Leah Sedou plays Fragile, a friend of Sam Bridges, in which 2019 computer game. Eight points for this. Unsurprisingly, a poorly attended question, just the five people attending, attempting this question. Um, oh, my console says stuff. Uh, I'm getting, now cut that out, brand new Halo, same stuff, was received out of time, wasn't received out of time, I've got now cut that out, it's in time. Anyway, um, let's take a look, the correct answer was, for the five people playing, Death Stranding, very well done. Uh, now cut that out, apparently did say Death Stranding, but out of time, and you'd already said an answer, Metal Gear Solid U, now cut that out, so um, this isn't the refire round, you don't get refires till round three, now cut that out, bad luck. Uh, yes, the first strand type video game, Detroit and Metal Gear Solid U, not the right answers, but well done to Jack Wilfred, Lupine and Cashy Head. You've got yourselves eight points, points on the board, and one step close to freedom. Let's light you up. Six, that's the, that's the catch phrase. You'll also notice I'm over here now, rather than in the game. I figured since I redid my overlays, it made sense to put me outside the game. It was cool being in the game, but it's just easier being here and there's more screen space. Question number two, a little easier. Seven points for this one. Have a go if you'd like. Fingers on buzzers, here's question two for seven points. What well, four-letter word can mean both leather equipment for horses and to change the direction of sail? Nineteen players attempting this one, nineteen out of forty. Correct answer was... Attack. It's attack. Ooh, wrong answers. Whip, saddle, saddle, and tuck. A, B, me. That, the U is far away enough from the A that I can't condone that as a typo. Uh, and it's a different vowel completely. So I am not going to accept that. I'm frightfully sorry. Uh, yes, that's... Yes, I hope you're saying yes, that's fine to what I'm saying rather than to... Rather than... No, my answer is fine. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping you're agreeing with me. Thank you for being a good sport. If so, Tuck, I'm not going to condone. That is what you're saying, good stuff. Um, and I'm afraid you're going to lose a life on that. Along with Saddle, Whip and Saddle. But everyone else, very well done. You've got yourself seven points and one step close to freedom. Let's light you up. Now, at some point, I need to look at my controllers to see who is likely to go out at any point. 
Uh, hopefully my console will debug it so I don't have to look at it so that the game will run smoothly. One of the harder questions in the round, question number three, is worth nine points. Remember, you don't have to play. Take a look at this and have a think. What would you like to do? Question three, worth nine points. Here it is. What data structure is a list of cryptographic time and transaction data invented in 2008 for cryptocurrency? Sixteen players attempting this one. Sixteen out of the forty. Let's have a look. One of the harder questions of the lot, in theory. What's the answer? It's blockchain. Data mining is what you do in order to get cryptocurrency, but it is not the data structure. Byte, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. Database, not the right answer either. And data block, very close, AJ, but not close enough. I'm afraid you guys are going to lose a life. Uh, however, everyone else giving me blockchain, very, very well done, getting nine points. Nicely played. Let's light you up. So, no one in immediate danger just yet. Up to question number four. This is worth six points. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit easier now, so um, have a think about this. Six points for question number four, if you'd like to play it. Here's a question. What is the name of the cord that allows a human mother to supply nutrients and oxygen to her baby? Six points. Thirty-eight out of forty. Just AJ and someone else who I didn't see sitting this question out. The correct answer was the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord. Umbilical puzzle, Dan. That is close enough for me. I am going to allow that puzzle, Dan. Uh, it's not flagged. If you put a double L, um, oh, um, umbilical. I know what you mean, Puzzle Dan. I'm going to condone that. My my instinct is to say you know what that means, so I'm going to let that one slide. Unbickial. Close enough. A typo. I'm feeling je uh, generous on that one. It feels the right thing to do, whereas tack tuck. Just to, I'm just trying to make sure I'm being consistent in my own rules. That I think is 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 fair cop. Uh, placent no, not the placenta, etc. That's um, something different. Pregnant, Drew Dave Tom, that's something you have before you get an or something where you get the umbilical cord from. Um, yes, the umbilical cord from where we get the belly button from. The belly button is the scar left from the cutting of the umbilical cord. Some of us have an innie, some of us have an outie, but um, it all comes from the same thing. Um, so just a couple of players there, Drew Dave Tom and etc. are going to lose a life on that one. Everyone else getting themselves six points. Very well done. Let's light you up. So we reach the midpoint. Question number five is worth a single point. We're getting into some of the easier questions now moving down. Um, one away from escape if you've got a nice light shade of blue. Um, one away. That's Keshi and Lupine currently on 30 points trying to make a quick exit while they can. They might want to get the next question the easiest and cut the losses while they're ahead. They might want to wait for a more difficult question. We're getting the 8, 7, 9 and 6 all correct so far. They've put themselves into a good position. Nobody else yet is um, in danger of going out at any point just now. We've got a few easier questions to come so this could change things uh, moving forward. I'm going to go to a camera pan just because I never do them. Fingers on buzzers everybody. Everybody, question number five is worth a single point. Take a look at this. What is the name for the elongated bicycle intended for two people, one pedal behind the other? Four out of 40 players attempting this one. Always a bit of a double-edged sword going for the easy question, because although it's a guaranteed question towards your five, it's only a single point, and you want as many points as you can get. Notably, Keshi and Lupine, who are one away, choosing to sit this one out. The correct answer was a tandem. Unicycle puzzle down. I can't condone that one. It's uh, the uh, unicycle is a bike with one wheel. Tandem bike, though, dogfish, I can condone. That's absolutely fine. Tandem, tandem bicycle, I think, was on the alternative answers list. Um, it should debug these somewhere. It doesn't. <laughs> That's a really silly thing to have then. I should be debugging that. Um, but yes, yeah, Dogfish, tandem bike, absolutely fine. Uh, obviously snuck through for a single point there. So, um, no one due for elimination yet at this point, so let's light you back up. And check out where we are. If you are one away, 
Still Cashy and Lupine, just the one question away. Next question's worth five. They might want to have a go at this one. If you require all of the remaining questions, you've gone Orange, AJ, and Drew, Dave, Tom. You do need to get all of the remaining questions. If you don't get um, all of the remaining questions, it means you won't be able to answer enough questions and you will be eliminated. Uh, and just puzzle down at the moment, down to his last life here. So step carefully, puzzle down. One more wrong answer will see you eliminated from the game. Fingers on buzzers, gang. Question number six is worth five points. Take a look at this. What moves away from the Earth at the rate of 3.8 centimetres per year? Something I should add at this point, for every life you've got left at the end of this round, you will get a bonus point, single point. So if you have got a life uh, left at the end of this round, you get a bonus point for it, which all adds up. Correct answer to this question. It's the moon, it's not the sun, Jay Turner. It is the nor Maxio, nor AJ, not the sun. It is the moon. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is like in on the earth. It's in the atmosphere, Shadow Age. So, um, uh, I mean, it, it may technically be correct. Does carbon dioxide move away from the earth at a rate of 3.8 centimeters per year? I, that's very difficult to qualify. Uh, but the answer we were after there was the moon. So I'm afraid Jay Turner and Shadowmane, Maxio and AJ you're going to lose a life and sadly AJ it is now impossible for you to escape so for you my friend you are the first casualty of the night it is the end of the road and it's lights out AJ summarily eliminated from the game a lot more colour going on here though now if you want away lots of players want away any one of the next four questions will see you making a bit of freedom and escaping into round number two if you require all the remaining questions, you're orange, Maxio and Drew Dave Tom, you've still got to answer all four of these questions in order to escape, one of which is the 10-pointer, so the best of luck to you. And if you're on your last life, a handful of people now, Jay Turner, Puzzle Dan and Shadowmane, one more incorrect answer will see you knocked out of the game. Fingers on buzzers, gang. Question number seven is worth three points. Take a look at this. In Judo and Karate, what colour of belt is worn by adults who are beginners? out of 39 just 10 players sitting this question out let's take a look correct answer was white it is the white belt ab me going for yellow j turner going for brown puzzle dan going for red two going for green energy going for yellow and top one going for green and sm midi going for yellow quite a few wrong answers actually in there um yeah none of those are right white i'm afraid chat wilfred said i'm actually not sure um Presumably after your answer had been submitted, it was received out of time according to this. Um, I've got lots of names going on here. Um, due for elimination, unfortunately, Jay Turner and Puzzle Dan both getting that answer wrong, I'm afraid. That does mean you have been eliminated from the game. So for you two, it's the end of the road. And it's lights out. Jay Turner and Puzzle Dan leave us. However, we have got our first escapees, Keshi Head and Brig Bother, Zeusless and Cola, Car and Mogra making their escapes. Very nicely done. Keshi with 33 points, currently setting the pace, as it were. Uh, 33, 30, 22, 22, 30, and 22 our escapees so far. Six players have escaped. Lots of players, though, still one away, and three questions to give me an answer. Two-pointer, two ten-pointer, or four-pointer. This is going to be the big decision moment. You take the very easy two-point, risk the very hard ten-point, and hope that the four-point is a nice backup question, or do you just get out now? Something to bear in mind. If you require all of them, you're Orange, Maxio, SM Midi, and Drew Dave Tom. You've got to give me correct answer to all three of these questions, or you'll be eliminated. And if you're on your last, last life, Shadowmane, Toot, and AB Me, one wrong answer will see you eliminated. Good luck. Question number eight is the two-pointer. Here it is. In the US, what was banned during the Prohibition era of the 1920s and early 30s? And there's your time. Let's take a look. The correct answer was... It was alcohol. No wrong answers there, so everyone who's given me the right answer, everyone who's given me an answer, I should say, it was a right answer. We've got a lot more players have escaped on that one. Let me see. Um, 15 escape players now. Clive, Keshi, Brig, Claire, 
Mr. Quizworthy, it's Otley, Zeus's Cola, Big Man, Aaron Carr, Mogra, Dogfish, Ohay, Jack Wilfred and Matt the Ref have now all escaped with two questions left to go. Of course, one of which is a 10-pointer, so maybe they're cutting their losses. Unfortunately, though, Drew Dave Tom needed to give me a correct answer to that one and failed to proffer an answer. So I'm afraid, Drew Dave Tom, it is the end of the road and it's lights out. With two questions to go then, a 10-pointer and a 4-pointer, we have got 15 players who have escaped, 21 players still alive. If you're one away, you're flashing now, one of the blue players, either of the next two will see you good to escape. If you require both, Maxio, Preystreams, SM Midi, you've got to give me the 10-pointer and the 4-pointer if you want to get away. And if you're on your last life, tread carefully. Two, AB me, Shadow Main. A wrong answer. We'll see you out of the game. Best of luck to you all. Question number nine is 10-pointer. Here it is. Which defensive wall across Scotland was erected on the orders of Antonius Pius Caesar? Why do I get the impression we're going to have some tears on this question? 13 players attempting this question. Oh dear me. It may not be what you think it is. It may not be what you think it is for 10 points. It's not Hadrian's Wall, I'm afraid. Is this a trap? <laughs> yes, it was the Antonine Wall. Quite a, quite a bit further north than Hadrian's Wall and built a long time before. Hadrian's Wall is not the right answer and a lot of people falling into that trap quest. The Scotland Wall I'm actually are going for. Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's Wall. It was a 10-pointer in fairness only. Uh, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's Wall, Scotland Wall, Hadrian's Walls, Hadrian's, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian's, Hadrian's Wall. All the wrong answers seem to be a combination of either Hadrian's or... Scotland wall. A couple of players though give me Antonine wall, specifically Lupine Toot. And that was it. <laughs> Lupine and Toot giving me the right answers there. Very, very well done. Sadly, SM Midi, AB Me, Shadow Main, Prey Streams, and Maxio, either you've exhausted your lives or it's impossible for you to escape, or both. Either way, for you five, it is the end of the road and it's lights out relative massacre which means 17 players have now escaped but 14 players are still live you've never escaped round one shadow Man. oh but to be fair shadow Man, if it's any consolation neither have i i've only played it once but i've also never escaped round one so you know the drill if you require all of them it's the same as being one away if you're orange you've got to give me this four pointer if you want to survive to round number two the very best of luck here is question 10 for four points confusingly named after the french for morning what is an afternoon theater performance called Wanna give me an answer and everyone has answered 14 attempters from 14 live players they knew they had to give me something correct answer was it's a matinee and what do you know everyone escapes who was still live at that point which means th this is the, this is a record i think 39 out of 40 players have escaped round one very very well done um uh, bah says david <laughs> oh you're gonna have to sharpen up the difficulty here a little bit david i think maybe it will as we go into round two but very very well done to you 31 players you have all escaped through to round two if you've got any lives left we will give you a bonus point for every life that you have got left and that will be splendid i think i need to press the reset button first and then end the round i'll find out in a minute let's eliminate anyone who needs to be eliminated let's light you up there we go to get the sound effect so that is the end of round one very well done any lives left will give you a bonus point let's go to round two i don't know what's going on but the frame rate is just being a lot better tonight not sure what's happening maybe it's the extra monitor that's making things run faster maybe round two is sustain and because um Lupine has set the target at 43 by getting a maximum score from round one, which is 43. 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 3. The target is 58 because the target is set at the maximum score plus 15. 
This is going to determine how many points you're going to need for this round because you get a flat rate of five points per question in this round. Again, there are 10 questions, so there are a total of 50 points available for every life you've got left at the end of this round. We'll give you a bonus two points, which means the theoretical maximum for the game is 99. But 58 is the target that you are aiming for in order to escape once you have reached that target. You will have escaped and be safely through to round three. Catch with this round is that once you have escaped, once you have hit that target, rather than being locked out like you were before, you may continue to answer questions. That's the key thing. Once you have answered, once you've escaped, you can continue to answer for a bonus five points for every correct answer you give. However, you can also still go out after you have escaped. So tread carefully and remember every life you've got left at the end is worth two points so the last question if you've got three lives and you're half sure it might be worth a gamble if you're down to your last life and you really don't know but you've already escaped you might want to sit quietly things to think about as before if you run out of lives you're out of the game if it becomes mathematically impossible for you to achieve 58 based on the score you have and the points left you are out of the game and eliminated there are 31 of you here the very best of luck to all of you round two is sustained here's question one In an animated TV series, how are Master Shake, Frylock, and Meatwad collectively known? Four letter answer is okay. Correct theory of game. The bonus for the lives does not count towards the target. You must hit the target before the bonuses are applied. Uh, Dr. Dot Dev saying there are like five right answers. There may be variants available here, but we've had 10 players attempting this one. Let's have a look, see what the correct answer is. Aquatine Hunger Force. Aquatine Hunger Force. Master Shape, Frylock, and Meatwood are known as Aquatine Hunger Force. So ATHF. Meat People, Mask, and Horrible Histories, all incorrect. Um, aqua something you never knew. I fight for master. I, I am I am sitting here in a bemused sort of daze over this question. I have literally no idea what's going on. Uh, but Mr. Quizworthing, Oni, and Top One Gaming, those are not the correct answers. I'm afraid you're about to lose a life. Everyone else who answered there getting five points. Very well done. Let's let you back up. And already we're getting that nasty orange lice. Lice? Nasty orange light. Adster and Cetra. Your orange which means you must answer every single one of the remaining questions in order to escape the round. Tall order, nine questions to go, you've got to get them all. Uh, no one on the last life yet, and no one won away from escaping because we're only on question number two. Now, one slice of bread for your quiz prisoner sells out Wilfred, but no points. Fingers on buzzers, everyone, here's question two. Which item of clothing is also the area of grass bordering the Green Gulf, cut shorter than the fairway? Seventeen players attempting this one. Seventeen players. Let's take a look. Correct answer is apron. Would also have accepted fringe. Uh, no, we said we wouldn't have accepted fringe because fringe is not an item of clothing. Would also have accepted collar, collar or apron. But fringe, whilst it is known as the fringe, is not an item of clothing. Yes, the item of clothing part of the question. Very, very important there, Samster. Which means we've got a lot of wrong answers. Skirt. Fringe, fringe, sleeve, rough dress, fringe, fringe, sleeve, fringe, fringe, stup, and green. Thought fringe was a dress. Fortunately not. It is not going to fly here. Um, I haven't seen the penny bonus come up yet, Prudes, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, lots of lost lives there. And it does mean, Setra and Adster, it is now mathematically impossible for you to escape. So I'm afraid it is the end of the road. And it's lights out. Lupin, become, Lupin becomes the first player to go aquamarine and be one point away, one rather one question away from escaping. Though, of course, once Lupin has escaped, he may continue to answer questions for the lulls or to accrue more points for the final round. If you require all of them, you're orange. That's an alarming number of people to be orange this early point in the game. You've got to give me all the correct answers to the remaining questions and a couple of players on their last lives as well. Topper and Mr. Quizworthing, double jeopardy for you guys. All of them and no wrong answers. World of pain. Best of luck. Question three, another five for this. Take a look. 
which common fish is also the name for Schubert's piano quintet in A major. Twenty-one out of twenty-nine attempting this one. Let's take a look. Who got it right? It's the trout. The trout quintet. Lovely piece of music. Never played it myself, um, though I've played another one of Schubert's piano trios. It does write some quite nice stuff. I prefer playing Beethoven if I'm playing chamber music, though. <laughs> I totally go for red herring, salmon, tuna, cod, herring, guppy. The ref we barely knew him. Salmon, salmon, bass, and f. All incorrect answers. We are going to have a little bit of a bloodbath on this question because unfortunately, useless noisemaker, Mr. Quizworthy, it's Sotley, Big Man Aaron, brand new Halo, Top of One, and Matt the Ref. Either it's mathematically impossible for you to escape, or you're out of lives, or both. Either way, it's the end of the road, and it's the lights out. So, Lupine becomes the first player to escape round two. Very well done, 58 points secure. Lupine, you can go and make a cup of tea now, sit down and chill for the rest of the round, or do continue to answer if you're sure you know and accrue some more points. Um, nobody has won away at this point. Um, we have got uh, six players who require all of them from question four onwards, tall order, but not impossible. And two players on their last life, Ohei and Samsa. One more wrong answer, we'll see you eliminated from the game. Best of luck. Question four, here it is. Which major European country is separated from France by the Pyrenees? Eighteen out of twenty-two attempting this one. Just the one escape player, eighteen out of twenty-two, four players setting this one out. The correct answer was Spain, Lupine taking the high road here, and uh, it's going to rest easy. Um, Italy, Switzerland, Italy, all incorrect answers, I'm afraid, shapes, Jack and Cruz. Uh, no one due for elimination on this question, however, because uh, a lot of right answers going in there, and still players with points to play with, so let's light you back up. And let's go on to question number five, not before I've done another camera pan, because I don't do them very often. Just, uh, yes, because now I've got the warehouse in the way. I do like that pan because the warehouse and showing like the wider world and stuff is quite cool, but at the same time it's sort of in the way. Mm. Anyway, um, let's have a look and see what's going on here. Still nobody won away and still quite a few people requiring all of the remaining questions. If you're orange and flashing now, you need all of the rest of them. And now three players on their last life, Samsta, Ohe and Prus. One more incorrect answer will see you eliminated from the game. That's a look. question five. Five points for this. What specific word is used for the residue of turpentine used to treat the bows of stringed instruments? Fourteen out of twenty-two attempting this at the midpoint of the game. The correct answer was... Rosin. Rosin. Hmm. Now, Escape 73, if you want a bonus penny, anyone who's been in the game from the start cannot whisper this. I need to go for a second opinion on this because I would be inclined to accept resin because all my violinist friends refer to it as resin. But I'm since David is here, I'm going to get a cross-check from him. <laughs> Claire is a violinist, I accept resin. And Claire having said rosin, uh, and I know Claire is a violinist, yeah, uh, so that's two two people familiar with string players, and David is going to say we're going to accept a resin. So, um, while you're typing in your uh, code, I'm going to go through and condone a few answers. So, Oni saying resin, that's good for me. Theory of game saying resin, that's good for me. Car saying resin, that's good for me. Boom. Uh, Mogra saying resin, that's good for me. Rosin or resin, equally good. And there's the end of the bonus um, for the bonus penny if you wanted it. Um, old Fiddle Six Cat Gut is what strings are often made of, or used to be made of. Uh, Gigi and Keith, all incorrect answers, which means we have got five players due for elimination. Energy, Adjurs, Dogfish, Ohei, and Samster. Either you're out of lives, or it's impossible for you to escape, or both. Whatever way you spin it, it is the end of the road, and it's lights out.
Oof, all those points ticking away. And, um, yeah, then there were 17. Down to 17. We are still no close to having players being one away. We have still got five questions left. We're at the midpoint of the match now. Uh, Lupine still sitting comfortably on 58, not increasing his score anymore. He's not going to take any risks. If you require all of them, there's still a lot of you. Seven players require all of the remaining questions in order to escape. Uh, and just proves now on to his last life. Remember, two bonus points for every life you have got left at the end of the round. Fingers on buzzers, everyone, for another five points. Here's question six. What type of generator converts mechanical energy into electricity by rotating a coil inside a field magnetic? A field magnet. Field magnetic doesn't make sense. I think it was going to say magnetic field, and then it didn't. Inside a field magnet. Eight out of 17 attempting this one. Correct answer was... A dynamo! A dynamo converts mechanical energy into electricity by rotating a coil inside a field magnet. It is a dynamo. What's Oni saying? What are you saying there, Oni? Can I focus on a podium? I can, but I'm worried I'm going to break it if I do that, so I'm going to look at it in the inspector view. What are you saying there, Oni? Have you ever drank gravy directly from the boat, then? It's pretty neat. It builds character, and you can't tell me otherwise, sir. I can honestly say I have never done that, Oni. Never have, but I thank you for your concern. Um, turbine, Van de Graaff, the gravy anecdote, electromagnet, magneto, and electromagnet, all incorrect. So that's another bit of a bloodbath right there. Um, a lot of people surviving and hanging on for a while, but unfortunately, theory of game, Zeusless, Clive, Oni, Claire, and Jack Wilfred. Either you've run out of lives or it's impossible for you to escape. Either way, it is the end of the road. And it's lights out. And then there were 11. 11 players remain. And finally, we've got an aquamarine like Keshi Head going that light shade of blue, meaning he is one away. We have still got six players who require all of the remaining answers. That's another four questions they've got to do in order to escape. And we've still got Proust down there now on his last life, as well as needing all the correct answers. Only Carr, Mogra and Toot somewhere in the in-between on that silver podium at the moment. With four questions to go, here's question seven. Five points for this. Placing written prayers to God in the cracks of the Western Wall is a tradition in which city? Players having a go at this one again. Lupine just sitting out. Remember, Lupine, you can still attempt questions if you like once you've escaped. Um, I see you did attempt the last one, actually, lost a life on it, so maybe that's why you're um, taking a bit more of a, a backward seat on this one. And I'm sure your, your fellow competitors, if they get to the final, will thank you for it. Um, the correct answer was Jerusalem. And with Jerusalem builded here on these green and pleasant lands, Mecca. Not the right answer, I'm afraid, too. Uh, hack, I did. Uh, yes, Mecca is not the right thing. Mecca is something else. Uh, to my shame, my, my knowledge on Judaism is not quite what it should be. Um, but Keshi Head has become the second player to escape this round. Mecca is the wrong answer, Toot. And you are not due to be eliminated because you've still got a chance to get some points. So let's start you back up. Everybody else give me the right answer. Three questions left in this round. If you're orange... You need them all. That's everyone apart from Keshi and Lupin who've already escaped. And Mogra and Carr. Mogra, you need two of three. Carr, you just need one of the next three. And players on their last lives, I think it is still just Prugs. So it's tr still continue to tread carefully. You've hung a long time here, Prugs. Can you go a little further? Let's have a look. Question number eight for five points. Have a look at this. You're watching Hevesh 5 use a field starter to knock over a speed wall. What does that wall consist of? Here comes the esoteric knowledge, the wall. Let's take a look, the correct answer was... It's dominoes. Dominoes, it's a speed domino thing. Oh, look at all this red bricks, my hopes and dreams, tyres, bricks and tin cans. Oh my word, we've got seven players due for elimination. Cola, Dev, 
Brig, two shapes, Pum and Ben and Prugs. It's either mathematically impossible for you to escape or you've run out of lives. Either way, it's the end of the road and I'm afraid it's lights out. Oh, all those points and then there were four of which two have already escaped Keshi and Lupine. Car and Mogra, all eyes on you now. Car, you need one of two. Mogra, you need both. Both of you have got two lives with which to do it. The best of luck. Take a look at question nine. What sort of person would hold on to a barret while practicing? Or a bar, maybe. Mogra's in. Setting tight and wait for question 10. Correct answer is a ballet dancer. No problem from Mogra there now, just three points away. Let's light you back up. So Lupine, having escaped on question three, has just sat quietly and waited for everyone else to catch up with him, hoping maybe that he would win in round two. Not to be, Cashy Head has escaped. Mogra and Carr both need to give me the answer to question number 10 to hit that 58 target. Remember, two bonus points. That'll be four for everyone if you can do it without losing a life here. Best of luck. Question 10, here it is. Which reddish-brown, strong-scented drug is prepared from the thickened juice of a certain poppy's capsules? Oh, Lupin and Keshi are in. Mokra's in. Car, we're going to get an answer? Yes, we are. So Keshi and Lupine looking to bump their score. If they give me a right answer here, it's five points. If not, they'll lose one of their two-point advantages. No one going out on this question unless they get it wrong from Mogra or Car. Correct answer is... It's opium. Mmm, heroin or heronin. Reddish brown, strong scented drug. I need to defer to David on this one because opium and heroin are one and the same thing. Are they not? Oh, my wife's just got back to tell me otherwise. I'm good. Don't say anything because we had this before, didn't we? I asked you for an answer. David Bodycomb, Royal Flush, yes, allow. I thought so as well. I'm going to condone Carl's typo here because that can be quite um, um, seen as a typo. Not sure whether David's doing this for um, dramatic um, dramaticness or, or, or if he uh, genuinely thinks it's the right answer. I think I would be inclined to, to grant it either way. So Carr and Mogra, heroin is fine. So, after a nail-biting finale at question 10, we're going through to the final with just four players, Keshi, Lupine, Carr and Mogra. You're each going to get an additional four points, and there is not a lot in these scores. Add four to each of them. Let's go to the final. Oh, do I press the reset button first? Yes, because why not? Let's go to the final. That's the other thing I needed to make bigger that I didn't do. Uh, point rate object. Let's go. Let's go. No. Um, oh shit! What did I do to it before? Uh, that come down to point eight three. There we go. I need to make that change permanent, so you can see it. I did at least fix the bug, I think. Yes, heroin does come from the opium poppy too. Whether it's reddish brown is something we can look up later on but we have got four players in the final Keshi, Lupine, Carr and Mogra very very well done on reaching the final of the escape artist again no mean feat this is a tough game started as 40 went down to 31 and has now been left at four Keshi has the slight advantage with 70 Lupine's got 67 Mogra on 64 Carr on 62 now this round is survive and works a little bit differently from the previous rounds You'll be shown a question. The first player to answer correctly will start a clock on everyone else. The clock is your points. Your points will tick down at the rate indicated over on the left hand side. One point per one and a half seconds. If you don't give me a correct answer, or if nobody answers the question, you will lose the maximum ten points. Your lives are no longer not lives. They are now what we call refires. So if you give me an answer and it is wrong, 
you may attempt it again. You may always try the question once for free. There is no penalty for trying it and getting it wrong other than the 10 points. Every time you re-attempt a question after getting it wrong, you will lose a refire. You are not eliminated if you run out of refires, but it does mean that from that point onwards, only your first answer will be accepted. So those refires can be very useful if you have a mathematical thinky sort of problem or one you're in two minds about. So use them wisely once they're gone, they are gone. If your points hit zero, you are eliminated from the game. Once a player has given the correct answer, your clocks will start counting down. And the only way to stop them is to run, is to give a correct answer or run out of time. Best of luck to all four of you. Round three is survive. Here is the first question. In which card game is it common to use a pegboard to count to the 121 points needed to win? Luke Mine's side of the clock. Kara is right. Keshi is right. Ogre is right. Very few points getting lost to the void there, and we'll just watch this clock going down and sit in awe and wonder at the brains of these four finalists. Who all knew the answer was cribbage. Cribbage. Yes, indeed. A lupine starting the clock, but relatively little difference. I'm not even sure if Keshi lost a point there. Uh, not sure if Carr or even Mogra did. So, all still very, very tight. A bit of cribbage and one for his knob. Very well done. Let's light you back up. Keshi still with the advantage on 70 points. Drain rate still one point per one and a half seconds. Here is question number two. How many stars can be seen during the middle of the day with the naked eye? Mogra started the clock. Keshi is wrong. Car is right. Keshi and Lupine, you've both got refires. There you go, Keshi, and there you go, Lupine. Let me check Keshi's first answer. What did you say first? Ah, Keshi went for zero first before changing his mind, going for one before remembering. But yes, indeed, the sun is a star. The next brightest is Sirius. Would need to be five times as bright in order to be seen during the day with a naked eye. Let's light you back up. With Mogra starting the clock there, Keshi is still in the lead, but Mogra and Lupine now both on 63, Car on 61. This could be anybody's game. Very, very tight and very, very strong plays so far. Fingers on buzzers, here's question three. Neo in 2008 and Chainsmokers featuring Halsey in 2016 both had UK number one singles with which title? No one starts the clock. Keshi started the clock with seconds to spare. Everyone else's clocks are counting down. You can have a guest for free. You don't lose any refires for just trying one. Car has found the answer at the last second. The answer was closer. Closer, yes. Closer, the correct answer. Lupine and Mogra not managing to find an answer, losing the maximum of 10. Car finding the answer at the 11th hour. Keshi pressing the advantage there. Let's light you back up. Strain rate increases one point per second now. Those points are going to tick down that much faster. Keshi has used a refire now, uh, but everyone else has still got three. Remember, you can always attempt it, even if it's just a wild stab in the dark. You can always attempt it once for free without losing any refires. refires. So do bear that in mind. Maximum of 15 points if you don't give me a correct answer now. Question number four. Take a look. Who was inspired to create his laws about pendulums after watching a swinging lamp in Pisa Cathedral? Wrong, wrong, and Carr is right. Mogra's wrong. Refires all round. Still wrong. Foucault, Foucault, Michelangelo, Galileo, though, was the answer we were after. Let me just check your previous answers. Foucault, Foca, um, Da Vinci, and Michelangelo. No, Galileo, Galilei. Yeah, Galileo, Galilei was the answer. So, Carr now pressing the advantage the other way, and Lupine and Mogra starting to look a little bit scary now with 38 points. Keshi still in the lead with 52, but only a single point ahead of Carr. At this point, Foucault was another physicist. It's actually Da Vinci. I, I'm frightfully sorry, Samson. You, I, you, your grace is quite correct. I bow to superior knowledge. Figaro. Oh no, Figaro, magnifico. I thought I thought you were quoting Rossini there, Claire. I then realised it was Mercury. Let's read. Let's light you back up. Reset the podiums as Google that. 
Question five, midpoint of the round. Keshi with the advantage, but only just. Tables have turned a bit Mogra and Lupine neck and neck. 15 points maximum drain, one point per second. Here is question five. Which Sega CD full motion video game by Digital Pictures was discussed in a 1993 US Congress hearing and Keshi is in and right quick. Lupine is in just after, car in shortly after that. Does Mogra know? Free attempt, Mogra. If you want to give it a go. Mogra giving it a go. Grand Theft Auto, a good a guess as any. A little bit early Grand Theft Auto for 1993, uh, but might as well have a go. Free attempt. Night Trap was the answer. Keshi starting the clock there, but Lupine not a million miles behind and car after that. Mogra now in the most dangerous position, but still with two refiles. Likewise, Keshi, let's light you back up. Keshi on 52, Carl's got 48, Lupine 37, Mogra 23, still anyone's game. Question number six, the last point where the drain rate is one point per second. Have a look at this. Not a Sonic question. Often noted for their long tables, what is the name for a communal dining hall in a monastery or college? Communal? Communal. 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 Anyone going to give me an answer? At the 11th hour, Mogra has found an answer. And the clocks are on for the higher players. Do they know? Can they find it? Car has found it. Lupine's had a go and got it wrong. Mess hall, good a guess as any. Refectory, refectory. Very well done for finding that answer. Mogra, with the least amount of points on his clock at the start of that question, did manage to start the clock late. And everybody else has struggled to find it. Car just getting it there, saving some time. Lupin going for mess hall, Keshi not finding it at all. Let's light you back up. Drain rate is now 1 point per 0.75 seconds, and it's very much a tale of two cities here. Keshi and Carr both on 37 points, though Carr with the refire advantage 3 compared to Keshi's 2. Lupine on 22 with the 3 refires, Mogra just a single point ahead, 23, but with only 2 refires. Lupine now at the disadvantage and a maximum drain rate of 20 points for the next 3 questions. No one is going to go out on this question, that I can guarantee. But Mogra and Lupine will come within spitting distance if they cannot find the right answer to question number seven. Fingers on buzzers. Here it is. Nine H is the hardest. F is near the middle and nine B is the softest. What type of object? Lupine started the clock. Keshi's right behind. Cars after that and then Mogra. All four players getting the answers. And now the agony of watching the clock tick down without any points and the sitting and waiting as you've all got the correct answer to question number seven was the pencil yes 9b is the softest 9h is the hardest lupine starting the clock there though very little difference with the scores well, let's light you back up on we go question number eight again drain rate maximum of 20 points one point per 0.75 seconds mogra is in spitting distance of that danger territory if he doesn't give me a right answer fingers on buzzers here's question eight complete the analogy rectangle is to square as parallelogram is to what Keshi started the clock, Car is shortly afterwards, and Mogra has stopped the clock, Lupine, all eyes on him, and has stopped the clock. But they do tick down quick in this round. Rhombus or Diamond, both acceptable. I think Kite was also an acceptable answer there. So, still very close with just two questions to go. Keshi's on 36, Car's on 34. Mogra on 16, Lupine on 13. Mogra and Lupine now in that dangerous area whereby if they don't give me an answer, they a correct answer rather, they are guaranteed to be eliminated. A rhombus is not a diamond. It's Otley, the maths teacher. A diamond is not a shape. <laughs> it's Otley, he's getting on his maths soapbox here. I'm sorry, it's Otley. Um, I, uh, would you like to be a proofer? You could be a, come, come and join the proofing crew, and then you can. Um, <laughs> oh, this maths teacher anger letting out there. It's certainly I should talk to you about coming to be a question proofer for us if you fancy it, and you can tell me why, all, all the reasons why I should have flagged that. Let's go fly a rhombus up in the highest height. No, that's not appropriate for the mood we're setting right now. Nimbus. For these four players. Nimb what about Nimbus? Well, let's go fly a rhombus up in the highest Nimbus. Let's go fly a Nimbus. In the highest Nimbus. It's certainly A diamond is a sideways square. As the authority on shapes, a diamond is a shape. <laughs> oh, the, we're just going to keep the straight. Let's just watch the shape debate. I think no, we'll put a pin in the shape debate. 
Two questions to go. This round started with four players. It still has four players. And it could go any number of ways, depending what happens here on question number nine. Maximum drain rate of 20 points. Fingers on buzzers. Good luck. Here's question nine. Great British shape debate. Which American mountain was listed 400 meters higher in a 1979 atlas than in a 1981 edition? Keshi's in a wrong, but has got a refi. Car is started the clock. And they're going to tick down right quick. Keshi's found the right answer. Lupine's got a wrong answer. And is out of time. Mogra? Out of time. And the first casualties of the final are felt. Mount St. Helens was the answer. Let's just look at the previous answers. McKinley uh, from Keshi, just to clarify that. And then Mount McKinley and then Denner or Dina or Denali. Valiant efforts, but all incorrect. Yes, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, I think. And so 400 meters of it was lobbed off the top. Um, and so it shrunk in a later edition. It did explode. It did explode, Claire. Oh, Lupine and Mogra, valiant effort both. And Lupine coming in such a strong performance, setting that high target in round two. And then and then just resting on your laurels a little bit. Maybe you didn't know the answers, but unfortunately you have run out of points. So I'm afraid for you and for Mogra, a great effort, but it is the end of the road and it's lights out. And so we come to the final question. The drain rate is one point per half a second, a maximum of infinite points. Keshi has only got one refire, Car has got three, and Car has got the advantage of, t of points, 34 to 30. Have you ever seen Diamonds Are Forever? I don't think I have brand new Halo. Maybe when I was very young, but not recently, that I could tell you the plot. So, Keshi can only afford to give two answers here. Car can only give four answers, I say only. Um, if Car starts the clock, the game is over. If Car starts the clock, then Keshi will be counted down. Even if he gets it right, Car will be the escape artist. If Keshi starts the clock, Car will have two seconds to find the correct answer in order to be an escape artist. And on this question 10, you've got to give me a right answer or you lose everything. Your clocks will continue counting down until you run out of refires or you run out of time. If no one gives me the answer within 15 seconds, your clocks will start automatically. So you have got a little bit more thinking time on this one. But again, if car starts the clock, car wins the game. Keshi, car, the very, very best of luck to you both. Here is question 10. What well-known event happens 97 times in every 400? Car has started the clock. And there we go. Got to refi Keshi if you want to take it. And taking the refire and draining the remaining points. Uh, Keshi's answer for what they're worth. Oh, a raid. What's that raid noise? Dan's Quiz raiding us. Welcome, Dan's Quiz. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, Keshi head goes for... Uh, oh, you're in the right area here, Keshi. Bob. Let's bit palindromic numbers. And then going for... Well... Well fought car. Oh, and another noise. Liquid Courage for the five-month subscription. Thank you so much for your support. Looking good, Royal. You're enormously kind. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome to the stream. Lovely to have you here. Welcome to everybody. And uh, yes, leap year was the answer. 97 times in every 400. Car getting that answer very, very quickly. And Keshi not able to find it was academic at that point. But unfortunately, Keshi, your points have drained. It is the end of the road. And after a very, very well fought battle, it's lights out. Which means <clears throat> with a score of 34, Huge congratulations must go to Carl the Seventh because this week, Carl the Seventh, after facing every single question in David J. Bodicum's question pack, Carl, you are the escape artist. Very well done, Car. Let's go and put those points on right now. In fact, let's find David J. Bodicum. Let's get some hype and some love in the chat for David J. Bodicum. His ninth question pack here on game night. Um, you get three pennies for every time you're an author. So incidentally, if you want to come and do some uh, 
uh, question writing uh, and get some pennies that way you can come and join the discord get yourself the question writer roll um, and uh, three bonus pennies for every author the escape artists there are no first seconds and third thirds there are only winners and in this case car the seventh becoming the escape artist for the first time very well done car that'll be three bonus pennies to you first time becoming the escape artist enormous congratulations Oh, another great big noise. Party of me, a tier two subscription for 10 months. Think I missed the Twitch baby, but happy belated also. Thank you. Also, other things as well. What the, uh, also, congratulations, Car, and fantastic writing as always, David. Thank you so much for the support, Party of me. Lovely to have you with us as ever. And uh, hope you're keeping well, my friend. Oh, what an evening. Danger Zone 2 and the Escape Artist. Intense back-to-back -back trivia. But I hope you've all enjoyed it. Now... Things, what are happening? What are happening? What are the things and what are the things that are happening? Well, tomorrow, our great, dear, dear friend, Ash the Bash, is going to be hosting The Vault. First time in a while. So if you want to go and check out The Vault on Ash's channel, do go give him a look in and go give him a follow and give him some love. I'm going to be back with Happy Hour on Thursday with Bidding War. Now, Bidding War is the game that requires the most number of people for it to run. I need 21 people. So please come along for Bidding War, and it's going to be me writing it as well. That seems to be the running trend at the moment. I'm writing questions for the Thursday streams while they're, uh, they're a little bit quieter because it's new and it's a weird time of the day. But if you're here, Thursday, 3 p.m. BST, we're going to be playing Bidding War. I'm going to be writing the questions. Please do come along for that. It'll be about an hour and 20. So if, you're, if you want to take a late lunch, if you're in the UK... 3 p.m. Come and play Bidding War. It'll be just over an hour, um, and it will be amazing to have you there. <laughs> it's adorably excited talking about Bidding War. I do like Bidding War. It's a good game, and I'm excited to be writing questions because I've not written uh, questions for a, a little while. Uh, Friday, Ash is back with Winning Lines. We all love a bit of Winning Lines, so um, go give Ash some love. And Switcheroo Week continues for me on Saturday on this channel. We have, of course, got our regular schedule visit of Face Off, the final two heats of Face Off, and I can say now... 8 Minky is going to be a little bit of the kingmaker. It's all about 8 Minky's performance. For this reason, and I'll speak to the face off people about this separately, 8 Minky's heat is going to be second because um, 8 Minky is the only player at the moment who's not in the qualifiers who could get there. Everyone else who's not in the qualifiers is either guaranteed to the final or is guaranteed out. So it's going to be a very, very interesting face off which is going to determine the final four or five places and it is still wide open depending on what happens but a lot of it is going to be uh, looking at eight minky's heat which is going to be second which is eight minky samster inca and toot i think the other one being clive grunkle brig and uh, can't remember i need to go i need to look at the thing. i can't remember the other person who i forgot and i'm really sorry that i've forgotten you i, I there's, there's one other who is it? Clive Grunkle, Brig, and Proogs! It's Proogs! Sorry, Proogs, it's you. Thank you for the nudge. Proogs is the fourth that I was forgetting there, Peter. Um, so that's Saturday. There's also, because it's Switcheroo Week, what was supposed to be tonight, i.e. Blockbusters and the Code, is moving to Saturday. We're definitely going to be playing Blockbusters with returning players. The Code we might be playing. It will depend on... A, how long face-offs take, and other things as well. I have got the order wrong. I'm deliberately putting 8 Minky's second proves because of how... Because the other heat has no bearing on the overall standings of the league. 8 Minky's is the only heat that does have a, a bearing on the league. I did get the players wrong. I'm not looking at the stats. I was just trying to remember the league off the top of my head. Yes, other things. Blockbusters is definitely happening because we've got returning players. Um, so if you are one of those returning players, or the returning player, I can't remember who it is, I'd need to look on the previous uh, VOD, then um, yes, please be here on Saturday to, to take that, that chair in Blockbusters, which will be happening, as will Face Off. And then it might be The Code, which is what it's scheduled to be. It, <laughs> what's a new film? <laughs> All I'll say, it's Otley, is that it's Game Night, origin, uh, Game Night Classics. On Saturday for a change. That's all I'm going to say. So it might be the code. It might be. It might not be. And I'll leave it there. So that is it. That is all we've got time for. What a tremendous evening. Thank you so much to everybody for coming out and joining us this evening. Inca Clive Brig Grunkle. 
Samster 8, Peter 2. Those are your two face-offs this Saturday to look forward to, as well as blockbusters and maybe the code and maybe not the code. Um, it's been a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Massive thank you to Oni and to David Bodicombe for the two question packs we've seen tonight. Beautifully written question packs. And if anyone else would like to write questions, as ever, you can come and join the Discord. Uh, do come hang out with us. Get yourself the question writer role if you'd like to write some questions. Um, it would be amazing to have you here. It's been great fun. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, we're going to go and raid Candy. Uh, Candy is doing more Sonic speedruns. Um, love uh, a bit of bit of sonic speedruns and candy's online now so we're going to give her a raid i'm going to roll the credits um if you've got attendance and lobby pennies i will add those on in the morning in the morning on cool 97.1 <coughs> sorry family guy jokes um yes i'll add those on in the morning winners and author credits are already on now i need to come up with a way of automating that lobby a little bit better um but um yeah congratulations to car on becoming the escape artist congratulations to samster on another victory in danger zone thank you again to the question writers it's been lovely to talk to you let's go raid candy until thursday for bidding war look after yourselves be absolutely splendid and marvelous take care peace out and good night